So I thought that some of you might be interested in a system for writing harmony that I developed a few years ago, a system that allows me a high degree of harmonic agility. And although there are other ways to achieve the sorts of harmony I'm about to show you, I do find that this one is nice and fast. Also, I personally love listening to other composers describe the tricks they use when writing music, so I'm going to assume you feel the same way. There are a number of interesting harmonic systems out there that allow you to write very different sounding stuff. Standard harmony, extended harmony, the 12 tone technique, set theory, specifically pitch classes, and a few others, including negative harmony, which is getting a lot of attention on YouTube at the moment. Thing is, once you get comfortable with these harmonic systems, you begin to notice some similarities and points of crossover. At the core of what's important about all these systems is the interval, the distance between two notes. It's fine to look at two notes and say, these are three semitones apart, but if you replace them with octochords, then you suddenly find yourself with an unmanageable amount of intervals to keep track of. But why do harmonic systems exist? Well, if you try to just forge ahead with your music without paying attention to how your intervals are working, you can very easily get bogged down in inconsistent, repetitive, or meandering harmony. And since the meticulous logging of intervals is extremely time consuming, harmonic systems offer a shortcut that enable consistency without all the tedious bookkeeping. So the aims of the system I'm about to show you are, one, to give the composer the maximum amount of harmonic flexibility, anywhere from pure atonality to perfect harmoniousness. Two, to provide a method of keeping track of how the harmony is working, in order to maintain consistency if that's what the composer is after. And three, not to be too abstract and slow, allowing composers to use their ears without getting too bogged down in the hardcore cataloging of intervals. So to begin, let's take a quick look at the famous Petrushka chord, used by Igor Stravinsky in his ballet Petrushka. This is a combination of C major and F sharp major, two chords that sound extremely dissonant against each other. This is an example of what's called polytonality, a technique that increased in popularity during the early to mid 20th century, where two distinctly different keys exist at the same time, each with their own tonal center, or home chord. But our concern here isn't to simply play two harmonic tonal centers against each other. If we play C and F sharp major at the same time, we're listening to a single complex chord. And if we stick with piano writing for a second, what if I assign C to my right hand and F sharp to my left hand in the first bar, and then swap them around in the second? The quality of either chord is quite different. This swapping hides the individual tonal centers, and what we're listening to sounds like just two complex chords. So what do we do with this? Well, let's take a standard harmonic progression, say minor second, perfect fifth, first, which would sound like this in C. And instead, we're going to apply it to both keys at the same time while continuing to swap them between hands. So now we have three destroyed sounding chords. Nothing to write home about just yet. So let's use them to construct a few bars of music. What I'm doing here is separating out the notes of each chord to find interesting harmonic interplay, sometimes deleting thirds or fifths where I think they detract from the sound. Due to the harshly dissonant chords we started with, the resulting experiment is also predictably dissonant. Ah, how lovely. Perfect for a 24-hour news bulletin. I went from very successful businessman to top TV star to President of the United States on my first try. I think that would qualify as not smart but genius, and a very stable genius at that. So what if we'd like something harmonious sounding? Well, then we could use two keys that have more notes in common, say G major and B minor. And following the same process as before, bearing in mind that the chords in a minor scale work a little differently, I've chosen the following sequence for both keys. A first, a fifth, a second, a sixth, and then a first again. The resulting sequence is pretty easy on the ears. And using this, I created a quick, somewhat jaunty musical example. And this is really only scratching the surface of what you can do. Instead of having the keys follow the same progression, here I've given them different progressions, which I can now alternate on a larger scale by swapping them around in their entirety. And if you're the kind of writer who loves harmonic symmetry, this is a lovely system to try out. Alternatively, if you like a bit of chaos, you can just allow the two keys to remain independent throughout. 
For this last example, I'm going to pull the previous ideas together to show how much harmonic control this method can afford you. If you saw my recent video on cardiacs, you'll remember my segment on the cardiacs cadence, which I'm assigning here to both keys simultaneously. And using this, I created a passage to demonstrate how you can transition from a really harsh dissonance to perfect harmoniousness in a very short amount of time. So that's the basics of how this system works. There's a lot more detail to go into, especially how it can be used for writing in other styles like rock or metal. If you're interested in learning more, or if you want me to do a Q&A session, then send me your questions and I'll respond to them in another video. If you'd like to hear some of my music that uses this system, then look through my videos for a piece called Three Barriers to Concentration, which was written for solo piano. The first movement was written using this system. And if you want to keep up to date with my future music tutorials, then please subscribe. And if you like this video, blah blah blah, you know the drill. YouTube punishes me with obscurity if my videos don't get any likes, which forces me to harass you. Uh, sorry, don't hold it against me, we're all friends here.